Guys, if any of you can hear me, Nkosa uh, Zanamini Zuma is coming now. If any of you can hear me, Nkosa Zanamini Zuma is coming through. If any of you can hear me, Nkosa Zanamini Zuma is coming. Thank you very much, Kathy. I'm standing indeed with uh, the AU chairperson, Mr. Zanzaminizuma. Mama, we know that uh, the former mini the late minister, Collins Chabane, was involved in mediation efforts in um, the Sudan. Yes, indeed. What kind of um, what kind of um, work did he do there? And uh, you know, well, first, thank you very much, I know Collins as a freedom fighter, as a minister, as a comrade, as, we welcome as a musician. Our Deputy but of President course now we were working on the AU on conflict resolutions. He was very active in uh, South Sudan and he was making a contribution there. And of course he was also making a contribution in the peer review mechanism of the African uh, Union. And in fact I last saw him end of January, beginning of February Welcome when he was Deputy there for the APRM. So we are very sad, we are very shocked by his sudden departure, but we are also very grateful for the life he led, he's touched many people, he's contributed to what this country has become, and we are very grateful for that. Thank you very much for those words, ma'am. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. Honorable Deputy President and May, our bereaved family members, Excellencies, and all honorable guests who will actually recognize as we go on with the program, would like to first of all welcome all of you to this memorial service of our late Minister Collins Chabani. But first of all, we would like to introduce to yourselves the people who will be running the program today. We're just going to be calling up those who are speaking to or to speak. And it is myself, Edna Molewa, and Minister Tulas Nesi, who is standing here next to me. We would like to ask Reverend T.J. Mayayise to come and give us a prayer as we open this service. Reverend Mayayise, on stage, please. I will request all of us to stand and let us bow our head as I pray. Lord, we pour out your spirit upon this nation during this time of mourning. May your love, peace, comfort so rise in our heart that it becomes our greatest testimony of your goodness during this time of remembering Minister Collins Chaban. Shkwem Shamatimba, I kongelela program in kwa i kusukaka labangata ba i fambisa. Na in kwa labangata ba labula kufikela eka the deputy president Sir Ramaphosa. Le shakumwa we na lo kwezi ma akube wona lo uranga ka emashweni le shaku hinkwa labangata ba labula. Everything that they will talk, let it give comfort to Mrs. Chabani, children, siblings, relatives, colleagues, and all of us gathered here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Maya Yise, for today's prayer and all other prayers that we've been supporting the family with. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we are going to be calling upstage our executive mayor, Councillor Ramokhopa, to come and open, give us some opening remarks as we start with this service. Executive mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Joint Program Directors, the Deputy President of the Republic, Cyril, Honorable Cyril Ramaphosa, the bereaved families present, ministers and deputy ministers present, the leadership of the African National Congress in all its manifestations, 
premiers, excellencies, ambassadors, and high commissioners, dignitaries present, comrades and compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, fellow South Africans. On the morning of Sunday, the 15th of March, our country and the world woke up to the sad news of the tragic and untimely passing of the late Minister of Public Service and Administration, Comrade Collins Chavani, and his two protectors, Sergeant Sikele Linzwani. On that fateful morning, that dependable servant of the people of South Africa and the African continent drew his last breath. That loyal servant of our people and one of the greatest humanists of our time rendered his very last service to humanity. The immutable dynamics of the inner laws of nature have thus predestined that we assemble here today to pay homage to this emblematic human being whose entire adult life was unreservedly and selflessly devoted to the service of humankind. It is with reference to this that newspaper editorials and various tributes described Comrade Collins Chavani as a tireless civil servant, a hands-on person in his work, a hard worker, a person of great character, fortitude, and morality, and an activist who served our people with dignity and integrity. All the freedom-loving people of our nation and the rest of the African continent have suffered an immeasurable loss with the passing of this exemplary personage of our struggle for total human emancipation. The gap that has been left by the departure of this mighty spirit will soon enough make itself felt. Program Director, on behalf of the citizens of Swani, in whose name we speak, we convey our heartfelt condolences and deepest sympathy to the family, friends, and close relatives. The endless outpouring of love and emotion from across a wide spectrum is a living testament of the extent to which your beloved one touched many of us through his devotion and the service to humankind. We share your immense grief and assure you that yours is not a personal loss, but a substantial deficit to all of us who encountered, encountered the fruits of his efforts in his personal and private capacities. As the scientific luminary and one of the towering figures of the 20th century observed, I quote, a human being's value to the community depends primarily on how far his or her feelings, thoughts, and actions are directed towards promoting the good of his fellows, close quotes. Though a severe blow it remains, we know the deceased do not die. They continue to live in our hearts and heads. Their memory does not perish, and their doctrines will be effective even in greater circles. The list of attributes that populated the acclamations and eulogies in the wake of his passing left no doubt about his place in the modern history of social and political change in Africa. Program director, there should be no doubt about the veracity and validity of those representations and depictions of Comrade Collins' life. This is a comrade who, as a teenager, already perfectly understood both the theoretical and practical impl implicant implications of Franz Fanon's call to duty that, I quote, every generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission in life, fulfill it, or betray it, close quote. He developed political consciousness very early in the life that drove him to radiate explosive indignations at any form of injustice and human suffering. It is this awareness that saw him enter enter active political life at an uncharacteristically young age and go on to serve the movement and the freedom-loving people of South Africa 
so dependably in various pillars of our struggle for liberation. Henceforth, Comrade Collins' life became inextricably tied, tied up to the ebbs and flows of the liberation struggle, spanning various phases until that glorious moment in April 1994. At the time of his passing, the comrade was at the helm of the public service and administration, a department that constitutes the fulcrum of the conception and execution of government policies and programs. Under his leadership and that of his predecessor, the department was single-minded in its commitment to create a developmental civil service. This is a civil service whose work ethos, quality of skills, and moral rectitude are organic to the protection of developmentalism. Dear Master of Ceremonies, Comrade Chawani, in him we learned about the virtues of hard work and dedication, decisiveness and courage, critical and independent thought with collective discipline, unquestionable thirst for knowledge and the awakening of critical consciousness and devotion to human rights. In him, we had a radiating and an excellent example, and indeed a living embodiment of individual initiative within collective discipline. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for bequeathing us an exemplary conduct of discipline, selflessness, and moral rectitude. We sincerely thank you for teaching us through practice that humility is the chief ingredient in the formation of personality traits which make up a great leader. In spite of your hard work and dedication to service, servicing the people of South Africa, you never once went on a crusade seeking personal glory or engaged in advocacy for self-promotion. It is therefore appropriate that we gather here today to pay homage to this illustrious servant of the people of South Africa, a great humanist, and above all, an intransigent combatant for human rights. I implore all of you assembled here today to please accompany us in mourning the passing of this emblematic personage in our struggle for a better life for all of humanity. I invite you to join us in celebrating a life worth every second of his existence, a life unreservedly devoted to the service of humanity. Let us all jointly and severally ruminate on the lessons bequeathed by this loyal servant of our people and the greatest humanist of our time. May his name, work, and efforts endure through the ages and become a trans-historical monument of humanism, social justice, egalitarian values to inspire and guide future generations. You are all welcome to the capital city of the democratic South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you to our executive, executive mayor of the Tswane City. Deputy President, the Speaker of Parliament, the Deputy Chief Justice, the Chair of the AU Commission, Ministers and Deputy Ministers, the First Ladies, the Premiers and MECs, the members of parliament, the executive mayor and mayors who are here, the councillors, Hosim Pepu and other kings here, and all the traditional leadership present, the leadership of the alliance, which is led by the African National Congress, the DGs and all officials, of the various departments, the representatives of the faith-based organizations and NGOs, most importantly, the members of the Chabane family, 
Ladies and gentlemen and, and comrades, after this welcome, we are going to request that the choir gives us an item, and in that, we will be calling in a representative of Kosatu to come and make the tribute, and the name we've been given is the, the president of Kosatu, Comrade Stu Motlamini. Choir. When you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. When you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. When you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. Hi, when you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. Hi, when you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. Hi, when you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. Hi, when you are Mazana, see ya, ya boss. Hai wenya mazana si ya ya bo Hai wenya mazana si ya bo Mandla Mandla Can we have a representative from Kosatu we'd really like to have this memorial service running in a space of 2 hours and therefore would like to space save time present of Kosatu The choir no, he can come walking. Thank you. Director, Comrade Tulas Nwesi, the Deputy President of the Republic, you, the Chair has already <clears throat> acknowledged and recognized everybody present here. I want to single out just the family and say on behalf of Kosatu, we stand here to, this afternoon to pay our respect to one of our own, 
we paying our respect to the men that we have done a lot of work with as the labor movement in South Africa. We are paying our last tribute to a comrade who is an activist, a Kaida and a revolutionary. We have come here to say, to, 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 to pay our, our tributes to a life that has been lived completely. A man who we believe never had to enjoy his youth because he had to engage in the liberation struggle at the very youngest age. We don't stand here to repeat the ululations about the life because already a lot has been said in the country and yet a lot <clears throat> will still be said by the speakers coming. who are coming up here to acknowledge his contribution, mostly as a liberation fighter, but also because we were doing a lot of work as the organization uh, with the work that he was uh, performing as the minister uh, in the Department of Public Service and Administration. He leaves us at a time when uh, we are busy at the critical negotiations of the public service. It's a time that is always very crucial uh, in our country, for we all know uh, the impact of such uh, processes. They require depth of leadership, and we knew and we have always appreciated uh, that given to us by the South African government in the person of Comrade Collins Chabane was a man of depth, a man who had an ear to listen to the workers uh, uh, as we were engaging, navigating the difficult processes of negotiations. We are aware that at the time of his passing on, we are yet to meet to do exactly that, so that South Africa and workers in particular in the public service uh, would be uh, waiting earnestly for a reward for what they believe is their earnest work under very, very difficult conditions in South Africa. We are here as COSATU to say thank you uh, to Comrade Collins. He managed to pull us together and ensure that we are able to engage uh, under very difficult uh, uh, circumstances. We stand here though to say his work that he was so passionate with for instance, we are aware that he has been uh, quite involved in the idea of providing bursaries to those public servants who happen to be in the middle. They cannot afford uh, to take their children to universities because their salaries do not allow them to get the NFSAS as it is suggested because they are deemed to be paid higher than others but they still cannot be able to afford to take their children uh, to those higher institutions. He was sharing with us the idea of how do we meet that and mitigate that challenge of the public servants in our country who cannot afford to take their children to institutions of higher learning but do not qualify to access NFSAS as it is the case in our country. We think we shall be able to take further that idea, for we believe that it is very critical. He leaves us at a time when he was busy working with the negotiators to ensure that uh, public servants, again, who cannot access uh, bonds or cover by the banks in our country, but also cannot access the RDP houses needed to have a scheme. Government is leading in that particular aspect, and he was indeed quite edgy that we conclude on that type of work. I can refer to many, many things on what we have been dealing with, but we rely and we know that the leadership of our government is capable to take us forward on that task. Lastly, as we stand here and mourn the passing on of our hero, of our leader, the passing on of a, a liberation uh, fighter, the passing on of a man who he himself has led and understood the plight of the workers in this country. 
we understand that the challenges in our country are quite huge. They are quite enormous. We want to draw lessons from the type of a man that was. That emotions and anger, whilst it is a human factor, it does not necessarily be the, become the only ingredient in finding solutions. That talking closer to one another and engaging uh, and being critical to one another is also a semblance or a, 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 a part of a solution in finding solutions even in the worst forms of the difficulties. And we rely on uh, his character to learn from that. He was a humble person. He respected people. He respected us as the leadership. That we shall continue using his attributes in taking forward the difficult processes of our government that he was a, 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 a task with in ensuring that the people of our country and public servants in particular uh, are able to take forward. They have signed the service charter because they understood that it is critical for them to serve. It is a difficult terrain, but we have committed ourselves to ensure that we can be agents of change in the time of our government in ensuring that as we, on a day-to-day -day basis, engage with the peoples of our country for services they need, we call also can effect change and the view that it is possible for public servants to deliver the services even under the very difficult circumstances. We want to say thank you to the family. We want to say thank you to the government. We want to say thank you to South Africa for having given to South Africa a man uh, that has been capable of taking us forward. I thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you to the President of COSATU. Deputy President and the members of the family, my apologies for leaving out the excellencies who are amongst us, the members of the diplomatic corps. We also recognize them. I have also been alerted to the presence of Uma Makrasa Marcel and Mama Winnie Mandela. Colleagues, as we continue with our program, we are calling the Communist Party. We have been told that it is George Mashamba. As George Mashamba is coming, let me give you a quotation from the American civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr., who said, if a man hasn't discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Indeed, we know Comrade Collins Chabane was prepared to make that ultimate sacrifice to defend his strongly held beliefs and in pursuit of the liberation of his people. We're talking today of a brave revolutionary and a soldier who courageously joined MK at the age of 17, a cadre of the ANC, saving all the structures at all levels, community-based activist and a grassroots representative. Hence, he was ready to work with the communist. Let's hear the tribute from the Communist Party, Comrade George Mashamba. Hi, hi, Tiqueni Larry. Hi, hi, Tiqueni Larry. Hi, hi, Tiqueni Larry. I eat in two more summons. One one about your macondo. One one about your macondo. One one about your macondo. I eat in two more summons. Let's be back. Hi, hi, Banga City Banga. Hi, hi. Program Director. Deputy President, members of government and the various parliaments, says maybe Chavani, Matimba Sakani, Nandiangu Yunkwa Waka Chavani, Nabanguanati. Ita Isuka Communist Party, 
kutaitam komash kat. The song I sang here is one of the lyrics that uh, motivated me and others from my province to stand up and join the struggle. And I think it is still relevant. When Comrade Collins left us untimely, we in the Communist Party were engaged with him in a dialogue to deal exactly with the problems that have been highlighted in this lyric. The struggle against poverty, inequality, and unemployment. We have lost a social partner who was very much keen to deliver to us the issues that face us in South Africa. We have come here to pledge that we will not let him down, that his soul, his spirit, will live forever in all that we are doing. And we think that should be the what all of us should undertake to do. Colin Chabanuel was a humble of the people, and I think we should take a lesson from that, a lesson that, that comes from our struggle, because we said when we were struggling that the people are the forests, the bushes which we fight. Comrade Chabane never left the people, and I think it's important for us to make sure that our government organizations once more become rooted in the people, because without them, there will be no victory. We would like to say that uh, Comrade Collins, especially we from Nipompo, are grateful that we will us in that area. At an early age of 17, you stood up to challenge the, the regime. And in 1980, the year of the Freedom Charter, you left the country joining Conto Wesizwe. Fortunately, you came back and be with us even after freedom. This year is another year of the Charter. Now you have left us forever. But I think we should not let you go. Let your deeds be an inspiration to all of us so that uh, going forward, your children and grandchildren must remember that we are one of us who fought for the new South Africa, who also participated in rebuilding the organized people, not only in Ipompo, but throughout South Africa. He was the first secretary in, in our province, and he mobilized the forces there, so much so that, well, for years, Lipompo has been one of the leading provinces in making sure that the ANC-led alliance is actually the leader of the people. We promise as we stand here that we'll continue on the footsteps of Comrade Chaban. We promise as we stand here that his deeds indeed will speak. With those few words, we would like to say, at the Lago Rulam Wanati. I don't think uh, Comrade George Mashamba, Comrade Chabane would be happy. In Atis Bambum Zimbagakul, this was an activist, a liberation fight, and one of his nicknames, Nyamazan, the warrior. Yenyamazan yole. Yenyamazan. 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 Oh, sale sate. Sale sate. Yen sale sate. Isale sate, hinyamasa, 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 hiole, hinyamasa, amanta. Deputy President, as long as you won't punish me. I'm talking about this power, which is Amanda today. 
nothing else. This is the power which we seem to have. And uh, we will request the choir to prepare for us to have the tribute by a friend which is going to be the governor of the Reserve Bank, Mr. Lisecha Khanyaho. Choir. Thank you, uh, uh, Minister. Thank you, Program uh, Directors. And uh, Program Director, you did the job for me by going through all the protocols and given the limited time I have, I shall say uh, all protocols uh, are observed. Suffice to say to the Chabani family, Mavis, and the kids and the rest of uh, uh, the family, we are here to, to comfort you. Your grief is our grief, but we do understand that much as we loved Collins, that your pain would be much more bigger than the pain that uh, we uh, feel as a society. It is a great honor and a privilege uh, for me to have been asked by the family 
to speak on behalf of friends of this gentle giant that has departed. A great and selfless servant of our people, a fighter for liberation, a developmental activist who was driven by a passion to tackle the sketch of poverty and underdevelopment. A friend, a soldier, a leader, a political pragmatist, a diligent worker, our brother, a father to many of the children who benefit from the charitable work that he had done through the Shakani Foundation. It couldn't have been easy to decide on who should speak on behalf of Colin's uh, friends. And I know that all of us have something to say about this remarkable man. During the course of this week, friends and colleagues had run significant cell phone bills as we tried to piece together and condense the life of this great giant of our nation into a few pages. That is uh, the obituary. And I must say that uh, I had never thought that it would be uh, this difficult, for I had always believed that drafting by committee doesn't work, but it had to be, it had to be done. To the friends and those that I speak, uh, I have been asked to speak on their behalf, they are many, they vary from those who shared battle trenches with him, to those who had worked with him, and to those who had played golf uh, with him, at the, at the very least, when he is trying to raise money uh, for charity. And I tried to find words that would comfort you, and I borrowed the following words from Khalil Gibran, and I quote, dry your tears, my friends, raise your heads as the flowers raise their crowns to greet the dawn. Look at the bride of death, scanning like a column of light between his bed and the infinite. Hold your breath and listen with me to the beckoning rustle of her white wings and I close that quote. We've walked with Collins a journey, and for me today, I think many of you would share lots of aspects of his life, and for me today, I thought that I would like to just talk about Collins as a servant of, a, a, as, as a servant of his people. When uh, Minister Chabani, as we are here in a government, was released from uh, the island, he had the, the difficult task of establishing an office in uh, Limpopo. That was the office of uh, the ANC. And I had the singular honor of having to be his first accountant. And I must say that uh, when I hear sometimes people talk of struggle accounting, I don't know what they are talking about because accounting has always been accounting and there are many of us who had worked with him. I have seen a couple of people in the audience who, when we worked with Minister Chabani, he understood the importance of accountability, the importance that the resources that we were having the privilege of administering on behalf of the people that we were representing in the offices that we were uh, occupying, that those resources have to be used in the manner that they had been uh, assigned um, uh, and in a manner in, in a manner that you could without fail account for. And uh, Minister Chabani understood this better than most of us. We are here today reflecting on the life of a person who knew no boundaries in saving his people. Monitoring progress in the implementation of government programs is never easy. It is a task that mandarins and development practitioners grapple with all the time, and it is a task that technocrats reserve exclusively to themselves. In Minister Chabani, South Africa was distinguished. It was distinguished in one important respect, in that South Africa gave political ownership to the monitoring and evaluation 
of the performance of government. For those of us who spend most of our working lives in public service, we found in Minister Chawani a champion of development. And it came as no surprise to us when he was appointed the Minister of Public Service and Administration by the President. It was no surprise for you can't achieve developmental outcomes without a competent and selfless public service. Death be no proud, for you have robbed of us in uh, Minister Chabani a giant, a man who understood the service for his people, a man who would stop at nothing to make sure that the citizens of our country are, are, are availed of the services that uh, they exomally uh, deserve. And to the family, I say that your grief is, uh, is our grief. Uh, in the same manner that we had been visiting your house uh, when uh, Minister Chabani was alive, we will continue to do so. You can count on our support. You can count on us as part of your family because as you know, in most instances, you do have people that you call your brothers and those people most of the time come as a pure accident of birth. Those brothers that you choose, that you go out and you find, are the brothers who will forever be with you because others that are your brothers because they were born with you, they are stuck with you, they can't discard you. And we are not about to discard you. Collins chose us, we chose him, and he remains in our hearts. And in conclusion, let me end with this little poem from Don Matera on his death. And he said, it was our suffering and our tears that nourished and kept him alive. Let no shrines be raised to burden his memory, sages such as the need, no tombstones to speak their fame. Lay him down on a big mountain that he may look on the land he loved, the nation for which he died. Men feared the fire of his soul. Thank you very much. Let us give uh, Dr. Talisecha Kanyaho a warm round of applause and thank you for the words of condolences. Baku mintiro yabo labula. Mintiro yabo labula indiso. The Chabani family, you have just heard what people have to say about your own. He was also one of ours as the African National Congress. And at this point in time, I'm going to be asking our representative from the African National Congress who will be speaking on behalf of the NEC to come upstage. And as he does so, I am taking this opportunity once again to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that amongst us, there are members of the executive committee of the NEC of the African National Congress who are here to celebrate the life of Comrade Collins Chabani with all of you. We are mourning, but we are also celebrating a well, a life well lived. Up on stage, Mama Ayanda Jodlo, the Deputy Minister who also worked with uh, Comrade Chabani in the department. E A N C A S E C H E N Z E L O A. La 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 S E C H E N Z E L O A. La la la. E S E C H E N Z E L O A. I I say change the language. Let's celebrate as well. E S E C H E N Z E L O A. E S E C H E N Z E L O A.
program directors, you have made the load a little bit easier for me because I will ride on your observation of protocol and just say all protocol observed, except just to say good afternoon to the Deputy Minister, Your Excellency. Good afternoon to Kensani and your children, Madimba and Zakani. We are gathered here today to pay tribute to our comrade Collins Chabane, a humble, uncomplicated man who, lost, who never lost common touch. As the African National Congress, we not only lost a beloved comrade, brother, and friend, we have lost a man of great intellect to whom we all looked up to, to provide leadership on complex challenges we face as a movement and as a country. Principled and forthright, it was in his unwavering character that we found refuge amongst the greatest of storms. It is apt to use the words of Frederick Engels as he declared at the graveside of Karl Marx on the 17th of March in 1883, that the gap that has been left by the departure of this mighty spirit will, make in, will, it, will soon enough make itself felt. Fighting was his element, and he fought with a passion, tenacity, and a success such a few could rival. His name will endure through the ages, and also will his work." Close quotes. The past week has, been, has proven to be one of the most difficult for our movement, with the throbbing pain we have tried to reconcile how such a figure so full of life is no more. The past week has compelled us to reflect, not only do we reflect on the inspirational life led by Minister Collins Chabane, but on how far we have come as a movement. We reflect on how the selfless acts and sacrifices by the likes of our late comrade and the many heroes and heroines before us have, fought, have brought dignity to the multitudes of our people. As we reflect, we appreciate that the attainment of our freedom as a nation could not have been fulfilled without these great acts of sacrifice. So in this, plan, in this pain, we find great relief that this battle has been well fought and that the strife was not in vain. Indeed, we describe the death of Comrade Chabane as an immeasurable loss to all of us. Today, we celebrate Comrade Chabane for the legacy he has created, the animal, as he was fondly known, but Daddy Cool, as he was known in the department, was a man of many talents. We remember him as a brave, forthright, principled, and truthful man with a great sense of humor and an intoxicating laughter. Driven by a forceful conviction to liberate our people, Comrade Chabane chose to forsake all of the innocence and privilege of youth to join the struggle to liberate our people. He was among thousands of young people who left a, rep a repressive apartheid South Africa to swell the ranks of our people's army, Um Kondowe Sizwe, under the leadership of our President O. R. Tambo, the world's greatest leader. Those of us who were in the trenches with him know that a choice to dedicate and risk your entire, entire life for the cause of freedom meant forsaking all trappings and semblance of normality, subjecting ourselves to a life bare of basic necessities and luxuries. In line with the provisions of the Freedom Charter, we ought, we sought, all we sought was to serve and to create a better future for all the people of South Africa, regardless of race or creed. An anchor to our movement, Comrade Chabane dedicated his life to serving our people, as a leader, he possessed a skill that very few can master, that in listening attentively, knowing when to intervene in a discussion or debate, his sober and well thought out words of wisdom were what we all looked forward to hearing, especially in difficult and complex discussions. His ability to hear out others as we spoke gave him the opportunity to further analyze and pronounce his views in a very solid and well-channeled manner. At no point would he let emotions cloud his thinking, and always applied his mind fully on matters. A leader of great stature, he led from the front, respecting each and every person's contribution, ensuring nobody felt small in his presence, because he was a man who loved people and respected the dignity of all. Comrade Chabane served the ANC with pride and dignity since he joined Um Sizwe in May 1980. During a 1984 infiltration operation back home in South Africa, he was arrested by the security police, charged with terrorism, and sentenced to nine years imprisonment on Robben Island. During this time on Robben Island, he expanded his passion for music by learning how to play the guitar and harmonica. 
On many occasions, Comrade Chabani would join the local band on stage and express his passion. After being released on Robben Island in 1990, Comrade Chabani continued on his journey to serve and played an important role in rebuilding the ANC throughout South Africa. As a result, he was elected to the Limpopo Provincial Executive Committee in 1991 and the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. He had a great trust in the ANC and its leadership. Similarly, the ANC had tremendous trust in Comrade Chabani and deployed him into various strategic positions, both within the party and its government. He was one of the key people who influenced changes to the ANC's present constitution. Comrade Chabani believed that all members throughout the country had to be educated in the history of the movement and how this impacts on the position we adopt today. As the ANC, we can only learn from the life led by Comrade Chabani. Our responsibility is to ensure that all our members and supporters live the values espoused by our late comrade and serve with the same sense of diligence, dedication, and commitment. It is indeed a tragedy and a loss to our aspirations as a nation when before its time, life is ended. As we cultivate and nurture our country's future leadership, it is the great wisdom and experience of Comrade Chabani that we will miss immensely. We bid farewell to a great man, an ally, my comrade in arms, a decent and humble human being. As we say our final farewell, we find comfort in the knowledge that you will once again be in the company of great leaders of our movement, such as Nelson Mandela, President O.R. Tambo, Governor Mbeki, Walter Sisulu, and many others. To his wife, Kensani, the children, the mother, and siblings, and all the staff in his portfolios. Thank you very much, comrades. Together we will take the first step and learn how to go on after his great loss. Know that you are loved and you will always be loved and have a safe haven in the African National Congress. May his legacy of selfless service continue to shine. In all this, we will not fail you, Comrade Collins. Hambagahle social umkonto, hambagahle mkonto. As commanders would say in the camps, Thank you. Mandla, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister Comrade Ayanda, for the tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, let us continue with our program. As we do so, we will continue to recognize other dignitaries who may not have had an opportunity to recognize right from the beginning. We take this opportunity to recognize here the presence of our VCs, vice chancellors, all chapter nine institutions representatives who are here and we would li now like to move on with our program. And in moving on with our program, we'd like to welcome one of the members from the performing arts who had an opportunity to live with and to play with and to sing with, Comrade Collins Chabani, and that is Ndate Don Laka, who will be coming upstage to perform for us and really to showcase what they've been able to do, what they've been doing with uh, uh, 
Comrade Collins Chabani as they entertaining our nation and our continent indeed. Comrade Don Laka, we are recognizing the Performing Arts Council representatives who are here and those who have been coming to the house to pay their tributes. I now have an opportunity to hand over to you, Dr. Don Laka. Let us welcome Don Laka upstage with a warm round of applause. I did say that we are celebrating a life well lived, even as we have tears in our eyes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Baba Don Laga. You really uh, brought the house to a celebratory mood, which we have to be in. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it has already been said that, uh, and as you see on the life of uh, one of our own comrade Collins, he was a member of parliament and one of the first set of members of parliament in South Africa. 
So we would like to then welcome on stage and on this podium the Deputy Speaker of, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Ndate Lichisa Senudi, to just to share with us the life, with his life, with us, uh, the parliamentary life with us. Thank you very much. Comrade Deputy Speaker. Comrade Director. Thank you for giving us this brief opportunity on behalf of Parliament to convey our deepest condolences to the family of Comrade Collins Chabane, the ANC and the Alliance in general, his friends included. Similarly to the families of protectors Sikele and Linswane, we hope their loved ones will be consoled by the tremendous amount of messages of comfort intended to soften and lighten the unbelievable hurt they must be feeling as we speak. All political parties in parliament express shock and disbelief at his certainly untimely death and conveyed their condolences during a motion debated in his memory this past Tuesday in the House in Cape Town. The speaker will also do so on our collective behalf, both in writing and on Saturday in person at the funeral. This opportunity created by Comrade Collins passing away offers us an opportunity to reflect back partly where we come from. And I would like to choose a words of Madiba in May 8, 1996, and he said the following. The brief seconds when the majority of honorable members quietly ascended to the new basic law of the land have captured in a fleeting moment the centuries of history that South African people have endured in search of a better future. As one, you, the representative of the overwhelming majority of South Africans, have given voice to the yearnings of millions. And so it has come to pass that today South Africa undergoes a rebirth, cleansed of a horrible past, matured from a tentative beginning and reaching out to the future with confidence. Amongst the public representatives, Madiba spoke about the pioneer MPs of the new dispensation was Comrade Collins Chabani himself. In a publication commemorating that period, Cyril Matlala, a journalist from KZN, writing pen portraits of the people they described as key players, included Comrade Collins amongst those key players. And this is how he described him. He says, I quote, regarded by insiders as a rising star in, this, in the African National Congress, Collins Chabani was a relatively low profile member of a negotiating team which overflowed with talent. This observation by insiders proved prescient when through his dedication and commitment, loyalty and discipline, saw him perform so well throughout that the president in 2009, when he became president, invited him to join him in that department. This significant public position in our country created an opportunity for Comrade Collins to do work many have already spoken about so far. But I cite this 
constitution-making reflections because he was not just one of us as membership of parliament. He was in the management committee of the Constitutional Assembly. And I would imagine it is because of his skillful ability to listen, to communicate and break through complex issues, that the teams that were recruiting people inside our organizations to serve in the key structure that led those negotiations to fashion out uh, what we are now very proud to call a constitution that is admired worldwide, which we fight daily to ensure its concrete meaning is realized by the majority of people on the ground, amongst whom Collins was always to be found. In Parliament, then, at the beginning, he served in the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, on the then Mineral and Energy Portfolio Committee, and on the Ad Hoc Committee on Intelligence. He was generally a very exemplary cadre of the movement, an exemplary public representative, and in the diversity of parliament, including in the diversity of his caucus itself, he proved one of the most valuable part of those teams. Parliament is the poorer for the laws that we have suffered. He was always alert. He was a creature with a gift for a focus on details and on procedure. So he was amongst those front benchers who never hesitated to raise points of order, including mischievous ones that were meant to be held across the floor at opposition members. He could never hide his mischief. He doesn't sit far from the uh, podium, and so we can see in his eyes when what he is going to raise is already written in his eyes, he's already smiling, and we know this one is not a real point of order. The man is up to some mischief. So for presiding officers, he was both a delight and a headache in the house. I cannot make I cannot resist making an observation of the timing of his death. He dies on the 15th of May, of March rather, a day after we reburied Moses Kotani. One of his heroes, the hero of our revolution, but also on the same day, 132 years ago, in 1883, Karl Marx died. Not one to be superstitious. It is absolutely significant that we now reflect about his life, its value to the revolution, as we reflect about the value and contributions of those that died during that day and those we reburied. And on Sunday, we will rebury another of our heroes. It is a loss about which our country, proud for its achievement, cannot but think hard about the lessons we must learn from his life. He was a simple man, absolutely did not allow his status in the organization, in parliament, in cabinet, to go to his head. The president spotted the most appropriate person to head department and found the Department of Performance Monitoring and Evaluation. His demeanor was such that the difficult task 
of communicating with ministers, deputy ministers, and DG are done with someone whose demeanor is the most appropriate. Hardly ever ruffled, cool, a deep listener, but a powerful thinker, but also when feeling very strong on matters, very sharp and fearless in communicating his ideas. So in this decade of the CADA, which the African National Congress talks about, these fragments, including those that his friends talk about, and the music that kept his sanity, are the lessons we must take away and hope that from both the, mu the music and the work he did to build the kind of public service, the kind of cabinet ways of working, parliamentary practice and conduct that are worth emulating so that those who come afterwards, uh, such as we plan to do in parliament, they must feature amongst the top achievers, the builders and architects of the new dispensation. He dies as we approach the 21st anniversary of our freedom and as we intend practically to radically change the conditions of our people for the better. His contributions will no doubt be amongst those that for a long time, as we recover, we will not forget. Thank you, Program Director. Thank you very much, Shatali Chesa, for sharing with us Comrade Chabani's life in Parliament and parliamentary work. I really am going to drive this uh, uh, car in high speed now without losing what we came here for. We are now going to be calling on stage Nwanawaha Ntate Chabani, Ki Matimba Chabani, to come and share with us from a home point of view, a family point of view. Akombela Kuri Mita Alan. Ngei bachinela something yanala. Kaye kona. Uh, greetings, Deputy President, uh, Deputy Ministers, Ministers, and in following with protocol, I will say protocol observed, all protocols observed. A great giant to show the globe like a colossal has fallen. A mind whose thoughts have opened the doors to our liberty has ceased to function. A heart whose dreams gave hope to the despised has forever lost its beat. The gentle voice whose measured words of reason shook the thrones of tyrants has been silenced. Those are borrowed words from the late great uh, Honorable former President Nelson Mandela at the funeral of the late great Oliver Tambo. I found that they truly encompass the, the sentiment of having have lost the great. And I say that without being sensational, without exaggerating, but with complete honesty and, and humility. To some of you here, um, my old man was a colleague. To some, he was a friend. To some, he was, uh, I suppose I could say, trash-talking golf player. To some, he was, or to not some, but he was a husband. 
he was also a son, and he was also a father. To my sister and I, he was everything. And by everything, I mean he was the colleague that would aspire to be like based on how much his colleagues commended his work ethic. He was the friend who dream of having based on how much his friends commended him on his loyalty. He was the husband any wife would want based on how much my mother dearly loved him. He was the son any father would be proud of. And he was the father He was a father that both my sister and I will never forget and I'm eternally grateful to have had him. The, one of the first memories that I have of my father um, was I think I was about six, seven. And he promised me that we were going to go to Johannesburg. So we grew up in Limpopo. I grew up in Limpopo. So Johannesburg was a big deal for me going to Johannesburg. That's where Dynamite Deep Blue Gloof was, Yizu Yizu, all these things. That's how I thought of, 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 of Johannesburg. And fearing that maybe his mind might change, I said to him, no, I'm going to be with him the entire day. So he went to meetings, I was with him, and eventually towards the late afternoon, we as a family we all left, and we headed towards uh, the carousel. The carousel is a casino that's just well, it's before you even get to Pretoria. So we went inside there. My sister and I played it's a sorts of games, your car games. Your... I was amazed by the different funny lights. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a dream for me. This was, this was the best job. It was better than this uh, Dynamite Deep Blue Blue, this user user thing that I'd been seeing on TV. Um, so after that experience, I went home. Uh, on the Monday, I went to school bragging to everyone about how, no, look, I, I, I had the time of my life in Johannesburg. It's a city like no other, and, and I'd recommend anyone to go there. So that, that caused an argument between me and one of my classmates who was quick to tell me that, no, no, I've never been there. Uh, we got into a bit of an argument to which I started calling the teacher a liar because she too was saying I'd not been to Johannesburg. Um, eventually, I went home. I uh, asked my dad if perhaps I could change schools because they're stupid there and they don't know, they don't know Johannesburg. Um, much to my surprise, it was myself who, who didn't know Johannesburg. Um, I, I say that to, to make a point of what it is that my father taught us, and it was to be appreciative. Be appreciative of, of all small things, of all big things. Be appreciative. Appreciation is, for me, a gift that he's bestowed upon us, that we take nothing for granted. And even after finding out that I had actually not even left Limpopo, technically speaking, um, I was still in, in Limpopo, I was, I was still very much happy for that experience that I had. I also recall... Um, there was a time when my sister and I and him were playing with these toy cars, which you wind back and then it rolls forward. And he was very much fasc fascinated with this car. Uh, so much so that my sister said to him, Papa, I'm just talking about a toy now. So, uh, which translates to, have you never seen a toy car before? Um, that brought tears to my dad's eyes. Um, why not? Because he's never seen a toy car before. But that's an experience which, for the longest time, I knew back then, in any case, so still young, I knew back then that that was an experience that for him, for, for a great deal of his life, he never thought he'd get to experience. And, and him playing with that toy car with him and his son and his daughter meant, meant that much to him. They also, more recently, I remember I was meeting with some people. And anyone that knows me and knows my sister know that we don't do anything without you know, consulting our father. So as I was stepping outside to answer his call, I could hear in the background him saying to me, 
Jesus, he's going to ask his dad if he can drink water as well. So, <laughs> so I, I, I took no offense to that um, because I knew why. I, I, I consulted my dad on almost everything and that I did or that I thought. And it was because I knew that that was my biggest decision to say he will always have my family and myself's best interest at heart. So much so that there was, um, I remember when you first got appointed to the Honorable President's cabinet, I think it was around 2009, 2010, there was an article that came out um, about the minister's misuse of a credit card. So what my, my old man did is he took his credit card and then he went and brought us groceries. Um, which, granted, when, when, this, when this scandal, so to speak, came out, he, he already paid for, already refunded uh, this credit card. But the point that I was making there is, even when he was stepping outside of what it is that he was supposed to be doing, he was merely trying to get my sister and I, you know, some Rice Krispies and juice, basically. <laughs> so, My, my role here as representing the family is, is, is quite simple. Uh, we're here to give thanks um, and give humble appreciation for the overwhelming support that we received from leaders of industry, from leaders in government, from his friends, from even people that don't know him. We, throughout this week, haven't had the chance to obviously look at anything that's been said outside of within our own corridors, but the feedback that we've gotten has been very positive, and for that, as a Chavani family, we're very grateful for having honored our father in this way. To my cousins, or in my, in my culture, it's, it's um, my brothers and sisters, Papa was a family, Lam Sabin. Maranga too gave up Melagos Cacat in Biltain. In a two gave up for Melago was Cacat in Biltain. To my aunts and uncles, Botina Wana, a family, and You've lost a brother, you've lost a sister, but you've, you've gained two children. To my wonderful sister, it's again, all I can say is that you must sing. You must sing and you must sing and you must sing. My dad was very passionate about my sister's uh, singing career or, or, or her dream of singing, her passion for singing. And all he would have wanted her to do is to continue with her dream and continue to do what makes her happy. Because what makes her happy is what made him happy. The, 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 greatest, woman, the greatest man that I know is, is in fact not a man, is a woman. And that's my mother. My old man, whenever, whenever he got an opportunity to talk about the family and us, the one thing that he'd always dwell on was how my mother allowed him to do the work that he does, in that his schedule was, was, was demanding. Uh, unfortunately, at times, he's never home. But he always made the point to say, Whenever he had to leave for work, he knew that his family was fine because his wife had brought up his children thus far and should continue to do so, the children which he was very proud of. So, my man, I'm going Nothing is going to change. You have been, you, do, you don't need to become a father. 
and a mother. Your role as our mother has been more than enough and it will always continue to be more than enough. When, when thinking about what to say today, um, I was told that I should, I should speak from the heart and you know, speak from the heart, speak from the heart. Yeah, which, which I suppose makes sense, but the problem that I was having is that my, if I was to speak from the heart, I felt my, I'd deliver half a speech, which would be broken down into tears. I say half a speech because I feel as though half my heart is now left. I say broken down into tears because my heart has been shattered. And the tears because my heart has not stopped weeping since Sunday. So I, I then opened a diary. I have a diary where in the top of every diary there's quotations. Uh, there was a quotation for the day. And, and so what I decided to do, I was going to go to the 15th of April, the quotation on the 15th of April, which was, uh, or which is my father's birthday. And it read, all happiness you ever find lies in you. And I thought, well, that's useless. Um, I was looking for something about all happiness from above will remain forever or something to that effect, you know. But... I really thought about it, and, and, and all happiness you ever find lies in you. And what that means is that my father has never left us. He's with us, he's in us, and he'll continue to do so for so long as we love him, for so long as he loves us, and for so long as we let him. Famakase Molulek Wanaitian Washakan Wachaban Waming Wadlaman Wamashakad Wamaleng Wagunul Ngom Kumbela kuri mi bami ulukwani le itwa kashle bani mashkwemi. Ani itwa. Akensa matimba. Natsakani. Thank you very much, the two children of our late comrade Collins Chabani, who supported by uncle. The message from the family very deep and strong indeed. Let's welcome that message now by listening to again uh, Mr. Don Laka. Kibone libini leli e na hamna tu onse tsamre as we celebrate the life of Comrade Collins Chabani. As uh, Don Laka will be performing, let us also prepare. Uh, to come up stage to give a tribute on behalf of the diplomatic corps would be Dean Excellencies Excellency B. L. Poco. Please come up stage so that as soon as dawn finishes, we can then listen to your message. Thank you very much. Over to you. Let's uh, feel free to sing with him to do whatever he guides us to do.
Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Your Excellency, the President of the African Union Commission, Honorable Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members of the Parliament, Premiers, my brother, the Executive Mayor of Trani, my colleagues, ambassadors, high commissioners, and members of the diplomatic community. We are gathered here today to pay tribute to a great man. A man who devoted his youthful years to the liberation of this country. And the man who dedicated himself, his adult life, to serving the people in the Republic of South Africa. We, as a diplomatic corps, in our interaction with him, we discovered an intelligent man, a committed politician, a charming man, and more importantly, a reassuring man. In other words, Minister Chabane, when you ask him questions, he gave you real answers. He didn't go through what we call in diplomatic corps, giving sugar-coated answers. He gave you real answers, and that will be missed. As we listen to different speakers, and with all the tributes that came from the country and around the world, it's obvious that uh, Minister Chabane affected a lot of people and was known worldwide. Therefore, it's a big loss to all of us. To look at his life, as we look back at his life, from his youthful years in the liberation movement, from his love for music and art, from his dedication to his work as a cabinet minister, as a member of the parliament, and so forth. The man we are seeing farewell today more than deserves to be called the great Baobab tree in spite of his relatively young age. We, in our interaction with him, we will remember many things because he guided us, our work, as the foreigners and as members of the diplomatic corps, especially when he was the minister in the presidency. He guided us and we will always remember and be grateful to that guidance that he left us with. May I, on behalf of the international community and in behalf of the diplomatic corps accredited to the Republic of South Africa, express my real heartfelt condolences to Manchabane, the Chabane family, especially the wonderful children I'm just discovering here now, to the people and to the Republic of South Africa. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. Let's welcome the words of comfort by the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps in South Africa. We will now watch uh, the life of uh, Comrade Chabani, Collins Chabani, on video. I'm told that it is ready. If we can get it on, please, video. Chabani, 
was born on the 15th of April, 1960, in the village of Shikundu, Malamlele, in Limpopo province, then known as the Northern Transvaal. A people's person, a gentle giant and a grounded leader who worked with a sense of quiet determination. It was the noble cause of striving for a better future for all the people of South Africa that served as a backdrop to the life of Minister Collins Chabani. From an early age, Collins Chabani dedicated his life to fighting for the ideals of equality, justice and freedom which saw him join the African National Congress ANC underground activities at the age of 17. As a student at Shingwezi High School, Chabani actively participated in the Azanian People's Student Organization, Azazo. He registered for a BSc at Turflop University, but a year later, in May 1980, went into exile where he joined Umkonto Wesizwe, MK. Chabani went to Angola for military training in 1980 and began work underground in 1981. During a 1984 infiltration operation back home in South Africa, Chabani was arrested by the security police and sentenced to nine years imprisonment on Robben Island on charges of terrorism. During his time in prison, he obtained a diploma in electrical engineering from Technicon South Africa and studied aviation. On Robben Island, Chabani also developed a keen passion for music, learning music theory and learning how to play the harmonica. This exposure would later see him become an accomplished musician, establishing recording marimba band, The Movement. On his release from Robben Island in 1990, Chabani also continued on his journey to serve. He assumed the role of the Provincial Secretary of the ANC in the Northern Transvaal until 1998 and in this role was instrumental in the re-establishment of the ANC structures in the province. Chabani was elected to Parliament in 1994, where he served on the Constitutional Affairs, Defence and Intelligence Committees. In 1997, he was appointed MEC for Limpopo in Premier Nwaku Ramatlodi's cabinet. In 1998, he was appointed MEC for Public Works and Leader of Government Business in the Legislature. At Public Works, Chabani established the province's road agency, which was the first institution of its kind in South Africa. In 2005, Chabani was appointed as MEC for Economic Development, Environment and Tourism. During his tenure in the department, he embarked on an international awareness program on economic opportunities in trade and investment in the tourism, mining, agribusiness sector, with special emphasis on doing business with SADC countries and Africa. Chabani was re-elected to the National Executive Committee, NEC of the ANC, where he at the time of his death served in the National Working Committee as Chairperson of Constitutional Affairs Subcommittee, Convener of NEC Deployee to Gauteng, Convener of Transitional Task Team, Member of National Deployment Committee, Member of Economic Transformation Subcommittee, Member of Social Transformation Subcommittee, Member of International Relations Subcommittee and Member of the National Disciplinary Subcommittee. In 2009, Collins Chaban was sworn in as Minister in the Presidency, responsible for performance monitoring and evaluation, making the monitoring and evaluation function a crucial part of government's work. At the helm of the Public Service and Administration portfolio, where he met his untimely passing, it was his deep connection and understanding of the needs of the people that Minister Chabani set out to bring public services to the heart of the people through reinventing the way public servants work by putting people first through the Batupili program of government. Collins Chabani is a former Chancellor of Mbulaheni Ramana Training College in the Vemba district. He holds a diploma in leadership and management from the Turflub Graduate School of Leadership under the University of Limpopo and a diploma in management from Esomi in Arusha, Tanzania. On Sunday, 15th of March 2015, the world received news from the fatal car accident that took the life of Collins Chavani along with his two VIP protectors. Today, we bid farewell to one of the most humble souls a man of many talents, 
a devoted and disciplined leader who served as one of the dedicated fighters for the country's transformation towards a democratic dispensation. May the fruits of his labor be enjoyed for generations to come. Minister Chabani was a member of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Swiss Mission in South Africa, from his childhood. He was a member of Shikundu branch, but active while based in Pretoria. His contributions include, among others, sharing knowledge on administration fundraising management of the church. He booked the Men's Guild in 2006, of which, despite his busy schedule, was a regular attendant of its conferences and other events. He was a benefactor in many ways, including speaking engagement at all levels from Branch Synod. His support spanned across all structures, including the Youth and Women's Guild. Minister Chabani is survived by his wife, Kensani, and two children, Matimba and Zagani, as well as his mother, Marubeni Elizabeth, and ten siblings, Richard, Patrick, Cecilia, Donald, Dinzalo, Michlodi, Ella, Kensani, Percy, and Selby. Rest in peace, Om Collins Chabani. Fambagathe, Wana Etiani. Washakani, Wachabani, Waminga, Wadamani, Wamashakazi, Wamalenga, Wagunule, Wabet Ramazalazala, Wimandeleni, Atsembangano. What a life. I think we can do better than that. What a life. Life well lived. What a life. I want to hear that again, please. Thank you very much. That was Chabani's life. Many of you had an opportunity to share a minute or so, months and uh, years with him, but it is very obvious that we couldn't find space and time for all of us to stand on this podium and speak about his life. I think we shall continue to appreciate every minute that we shared with him and to the family ego. On that note, we would like to ask the choir to give us a very warm, is it the same choir that I was listening to yesterday? Let it be music like that of yesterday, that hymn. Uh, like yesterday, if it is the same choir. As we welcome upstage the premiere of Gauteng to introduce to us our main speaker of the day, who he will deliver on stage as well. Premier, I would want to ask you to come upstage as we're listening to music, the choir. Modern.
very much uh, program directors, the Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Honorable Cyril Ramaphosa, the Chair of the AU Commission, Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma, the Chabani family, Sis Mavis, Matimba, Sakani, the brothers and the sisters, Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, the Premier of Limpopo Province, Premier Matabate, the MECs from different provinces, Kosikuru, Ramaburana, the Executive Mayor of the City of Tswane, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, the veterans of our struggle who are with us here including Mama Winnie Matikizela Mandela, Mrs. Grasa Marcel, fellow mourners. The program directors have asked me to say a few things on behalf of the Houghton government, but we have run out of time. All I can say to the Chabani family is that please accept our heartfelt condolences to the passing on of our comrade, your wife, your husband, your father, your brother, the musician, the artist, may have stopped singing, but his music reverberates throughout the valleys and mountains of the great African civilizations, Mapungubye, the great Zimbabwe, and Munamutapa. Comrade Collins' heart may have stopped beating, but we can deeply feel his passion in the movement and in government. So we say to him, farewell, Comrade Animal. The Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa cut his political teeth at the same university where Comrade Collins imbibed his politics, the University of Limpopo, which used to be called Tefluop. He went on to become one of the architects of the trade union movement, particularly COSATU, and the National Union of Mine Workers. Deputy President Ramaphosa is one of the central figures in South Africa's transition to democracy. And he's an accomplished negotiator as we know him. Program directors, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow, mon fellow mourners, Please allow me to present to you the former General Secretary of the National Union of Mine Workers, the former Secretary General of the ANC, the current Deputy President of the ANC, and the Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Honorable Cyril Ramaphosa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
sale sati yole sale sati yole thank you thank you let us be seated program directors Sisi Mavis Matimba Natsakani Members of President Jacob Zuma's cabinet the chairperson of the AU commission the Deputy Chief Justice, the Governor of our Central Bank, the leaders of Chapter 9 institutions who are here, the leadership of the Tripartite Alliance, COSATU, SACP, SANCO, and indeed the leadership of the African National Congress. Mamungema, Mam Tobeka, Mabida, Madiba, Mamukrasa, Michelle, Mamuini, Botobere, Borama Burana, Premier of Limpopo, Premier of Gauteng, MSCs who are here, and the Executive Mayor of Tswani. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, comrades and friends, distinguished guests, and fellow citizens. Sisi Mavisi, Ba President Jacob Zuma, Ba Tehimi Rungula, Aba Shikoti Kurbaba Kona, Shikarka Hina Nyamut, Ba Tabakona, Imgibel. Kambe bate imi rungula mwina na bakachaban. Compatriots, we are gathered here to pay tribute and to bid a word of farewell to our departed compatriot, Minister Collins Chabani. Today we remember Collins with fondness and great appreciation. Collins was a father, he was a husband, he was a son, he was a relative in the Chabani family. We remember a freedom fighter, a musician, a leader, and a servant of the people. Today, we remember a person who embodied in many ways than one, the values on which we seek to build our nation. With the tragic passing of Comrade Collins Chabani, we have seen an emotional outpouring of grief from every corner of our country, and indeed from beyond the borders of South Africa. Many in public life have been remembered with respect and admiration, but it is rare to find such a universal sense of personal loss for the untimely departure of Collins Chabani. We have seen our elderly and young men and women paying tribute to a gentle hero who was never removed from the daily struggles of the impoverished masses of our people. Though gone a bit too soon, his spirit and memory will continue to reside amongst our people in the villages, in the townships, and indeed across the land. His spirit and his work will compel us, as it must, not to rest until we have improved the lives of our people. Our loss is a colossal loss. 
When we sing Lalango Kolo Kabani Kate Uzabalaza, we must ask who will pick up your spear, Comrade Collins, in our ongoing struggle to create a just and more humane society, to calm our deep felt agony. We must find among our youth, our artists, who will take Minister Chabani's harmonica and bira to remind us of both the beauty and fragility of life. We must compose a national song to celebrate Collins Chabani's passion for humanity and zest for life. A person as sensitive, a person as caring, and as principled as Collins Chabani had no choice but to take up the struggle against the inequities of the apartheid system. As democracy dawned, he was compelled by his convictions to shoulder the responsibility of bringing a new nation free from exploitation, want, and hunger. In his village in Malamulele, at Shingwezi High School, in the Presbyterian Church, in the African National Congress, and later in government, he lived the universal values of equality, fraternity, and liberty. Throughout his life, Collins Chabani remained humble, unassuming, and committed to the struggle of our people for a democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous South Africa. We know him to have been a quiet strategist in an occupation often given to populism and defining or deafening rhetoric. Those of you who had the privilege to watch Collins perform his music on stage will know what I mean when I say that this gentle, thoughtful man played the struggle, he played politics, and he also played his work in government in the way that he played his music. With great talent, commitment, and certainty, but also with unassailable optimism, with emotion, and with a beguiling mixture of shyness and humor. He was possessed of the kind of genuine confidence that only comes with genuine humility. This man, molded by his family, shaped by the African National Congress from a tender age of 17 years, knew he, who he was, but he also understood who everyone else was and he also knew where he fitted in. He understood our history and the content of our struggle. He also knew the character of his organization, the African National Congress. He was not shy to lead, but he always understood himself as part of a bigger group, a collective. The village, his family, the CADA, a member and leader of the ANC, the musical band, and the people of South Africa. There was no malice, there was no guile, and there was no bitterness about Collins Chabani. That was the measure of the man that he was. His comrades trusted him they had confidence in his abilities. They admired his work as well as his work, work ethic. He was devoted to the ideals of our movement and the task of achieving a better life for all our people. At home, in exile and on Robben Island, he was known to be disciplined and incisive 
in his contribution to strategic debates. All week, people have been calling radio stations with stories of a man who spoke to everyone and listened to everyone, who stood in the queue with the regular folks for a toilet rather than going to the VIP toilet, who insisted on being treated as a regular parishioner at his church rather than as a minister or a dignitary. It is difficult to remain a man of the people when you are wearing the robes of power. But Collins Chabani showed us how to do it. He was a down-to-earth person. He always treated everyone with the same dignity and respect. Whether they were a manual laborer or a gardener at the union buildings or a fellow minister, Although he progressed to the highest levels of the ruling party and of government, he always retained his humility. As a result, he was a good listener and was always open to hearing other people's points of view. His interest in the views of others was a result of his natural curiosity and love for debate, combined with his desire to continuously gain a better understanding of everything. He did not think for a minute that he knew it all. He was very much aware that he might be wrong about some things, and he was willing to change his views on the basis of being presented with new evidence. This interest in scientific analysis was probably one of the factors that led him to study electrical engineering while he was a prisoner on Robben Island, which in turn would have reinforced his inclination towards thinking on the basis of scientific evidence. His deep, deep respect for evidence and facts led him to being viewed as a very fair person, including by his political opponents. Collins' technical and scientific side was complemented by a strong humanistic side. He was a deeply compassionate person, full of empathy for other people and their difficulties. For example, when Collins was the MEC responsible for roads in Limpopo, when the province was hit by the devastating floods of February 2000, along with neighboring Mozambique, Collins was one of the first people on the ground as the disaster unfolded, tirelessly organizing assistance. He spent whole nights in the pouring rain together with his department's road maintenance unit, battling to recreate accessibility across raging rivers so that isolated communities could be reached. I personally had occasion to witness this trait of compassion on Collins Chabane's side. A few months ago when a hospital in Limpopo had problems with its water supply over a weekend, somehow Collins, who always had his ear on the ground, got to hear about it. He called me and told me that there was a problem in a hospital in Limpopo regarding water. This hospital had run out of water. And he was deeply concerned that the patients in the hospital would not have water for a weekend before the plumbers and everybody else could come and fix the water supply. Without even me asking him, he said he would travel to the hospital 500 kilometers away. The time, as we discussed this, was 5 p.m., on a Saturday afternoon. He went ahead and arranged that water should be supplied to the hospital. He did not have to do it, but he went ahead and did it. These 
personality traits combined to make Collins very successful as a leader in government. His compassion made him genuinely concerned about improving the lives of all South Africans. And this in turn led him to being passionate about improving the performance of government. Collins pioneered the outcomes monitoring and national evaluation system in government. These systems are now strongly becoming embedded in government departments. Minister Jeff Khadebe now carries this work that was started by Collins Chabane forward. In time, and <clears throat> it is already underway, this will contribute significantly to improving the performance of government. In this regard, Collins has left a proud and enduring legacy. He has made a major contribution to achieving the goal that he was so passionate about, improving the performance of government to improve the lives of our people. Collins was one of the leading pioneers of our new dispensation. It was during the drafting of our constitution that I was exposed to his sharp and analytical mind. The richness of his analysis of problems and issues has left a lasting impression on many who worked with him. Collins passed away during an important time in the history of our developmental state. As Minister of Public Service and Administration, he was hard at work, together with Deputy Minister Ayanda Jojo, to develop a new cadre of public servants that grasp their role as change agents. In his life and in his work, Collins was the embodiment of our government's motto, Batupili. He argued that we must not spare any effort in our continued quest to professionalize our public service. Like him, we must put the development of our people at the center of our work to realize a capable, responsive, effective, and efficient developmental state. One of the less known aspects of Collins' work was that of promoting peace and security and stability on the African continent. He did extensive work in many countries in Africa, and I had the privilege of working with him in South Sudan when President Zuma asked me to be his special envoy to South Sudan. Many South Sudanese fondly regard him as one of their own. When they looked at him at times, they mistook him for one of their own citizens. For Comrade Collins was a little shade darker than I am, but he was much shorter than many of the toweringly tall South Sudanese. But they embraced him, and he took time when he traveled to South Sudan to visit many people to South Sudan in their homes and their villages. One of the things that he exposed me to was the true mark of his simplicity. He would always want us to stay in the simplest and the cheapest hotel each time we went to Juba. And Juba can get very hot in summer. And Collins always chose a hotel that did not have air conditioning. <laughs> and his simplicity extended beyond just the choice of hotel. I got at close range to see what he eats. Breakfast or dinner for starters would be ugali, which is porridge and meat. That's all Collins would eat. Breakfast would be porridge and meat. Lunch would be porridge and meat. And I say, Comrade Collins, aren't you taking this a bit too far, this simplicity? And he says, Comrade DP, this is what I love. 
I grew up in Limpopo and I was brought up on this. And I said to him, the more I eat porridge, the more I bulge. And the more you eat porridge, the more you get smaller. <laughs> so there must be some magic there. Growing up in the rural village of Chikondu, he lived, he appreciated and embraced the ways and religious practices, traditions and cultures of the people where he was born. For his extraordinary life, we thank his parents and the community who brought him up to respect all humanity and to cherish the collective wisdom of our people. True to his character, he visited his old primary school shortly before his passing and made a commitment to the principal that he would contribute to the renovation of the school. Because he gave our movement and our country so much, we must together honor his commitment and contribute to rebuild his school for the community. Collins Shabani lived a political life from the age of 17. He leaves a political legacy. He would have expected that his memorial would be a political occasion where we speak not only about the remarkable achievements of our nation in the making, but also about the many challenges our people still face. It would have been his wish that we draw from his tragic passing the lesson that safety on our roads must become a national obsession. It would have been his wish that our shock and our sorrow be transformed into a solemn determination, not, on, not merely to reduce the number of deaths on our roads, but to end them. We can stop the carnage on our roads all we need is our will. We must spread the message in our homes, in our schools, and our communities and workplaces. Let us make this tragic event the turning point in the struggle we must necessarily wage to have safer roads. As the poet wrote, as the poet wrote, Comrade Collins, we wish we could tell you we are not ready to let you go, but you have already departed. Your departure has filled our hearts with sorrow. We miss that little twinkle that used to light up your eyes. We miss the sound of your voice already. A cabinet meeting that was chaired by President Zuma was a sad occasion yesterday as we missed Collins Chabani's voice. We miss your laughter and your humor, but most of all, we miss the way you made us feel, like nothing we could, ever, could ever harm you because your love for life, for music, your family, and your organization was so strong and so real. There are others here who miss you, Comrade Collins. They have gathered here today. Your life touched so many people, not only in our country, but across the African continent. Your friends are here. Your comrades are here. They want you to know that you will always be remembered. And they are filled with sadness and grief. No one really wants to say goodbye. So we will just wish you eternal peace. Comrade Collins. Utlela kahle mutukulu wakamaluleke mutukulu wakachabani mutukulu wakaminga may his soul rest in peace thank you
Thank you, comrades. After the closing remarks from us, as the program directors were going to request Umfundisi Ubegas Vulele to come and close with the benediction. But let me take this opportunity to thank the family of Comrade Minister Chaban to thank the Deputy President and Mrs. Ramaphosa, the First Ladies, all of them who are here, the Deputy Chief Justice, the Deputy Speaker, the Chair of the AU Commission, Excellencies, Ambassadors and members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Ministers, the Deputy Ministers, the Premiers and MECs, the MPs and MPLs, the Mayors, and councillors, the leadership of the alliance, which is the ANC, COSATU, and the SACP, the DGN officials, the representatives of the faith-based organization, the traditional leadership, and all of us who are gathered here. But let me summarize this service as follows. As Deputy President has just shown, and even all the other speakers confirmed, Comrade Collins was an all-rounder, a man of many skills, but above all, a compassionate, compassionate human being with a positive zest for life and for getting the job done. Generously, he released some of his best people to assist all of us as different ministers. This is a man who was never concerned with the personal aggrandizement. His objective was always to improve the service delivery across government as a whole. And this will be an important part of his legacy. In the years to come, when we speak, whether we're talking strategic planning, we're talking performance, monitoring, and evaluation. We will always remember the groundbreaking work of Mr. Collins Chaban. His contribution in the form of the continuous improvement in the government performance will be felt for many years to come. Amapongo, Wafezile, Ukazo, Ulukrebil. So Salasim Kumbula, Ambaga Sled Kawala Makao, Ambaga Sled Comrade Collins. But also, we must say it, we also remember his protectors, Sergeant Lesiba Sekele and Sergeant Lawrence Linswan, whose lives were also tragically cut short, whom we had their memorial services this morning, and this was led by SAPS. To the family and friends, I realize that nothing we say can take away the pain that death brings in its wake. But we can offer a perspective that even though Comrade Collins Chabane died much too soon and in a violent way, a life well lived is never a waste. Let me conclude by making this short quote from a German communist poet, Bertolt Brecht. I quote, don't fear death so much, but rather fear the inadequate life.
unquote. There was nothing inadequate about the life of Comrade Collins. Now we are making the announcements. Before that, there is a number of messages of support for the family. These will be forwarded to the family. The funeral service of Minister Chabane will be held in Shikundu, Shikundu village in the sports ground on Saturday, the 21st of March, starting at 9. We are starting at 9. We're not arriving. It's an official funeral. Therefore, we will just be starting. The funeral of or funerals of Sajin Linzwane will be on Saturday, the 21st of March at 7 o'clock, Hamarishan. And the funeral of Sajin Sekel will be at 6 o'clock on Sunday, the 22nd March. It's Mapungula village. The family, as we depart from here, is requested to return to the holding room. Colleagues, you will understand there's very limited refreshments for the elderly and those who may be taking medication. We also have the condolence books at the union building in parliament at 10 A's and in the Department of Public Service and Administration in those offices, as well as in the offices of the Premier in Limpopo. The last one is, there is a bus for the Robben Islanders and the veterans organized by the Robben Island Political Association, which will leave, we're told, tomorrow at 12. But please call Mpo at this number, 076-805-0690. Let me repeat the number. It's Mpo. 076-805-0690. Once more, after the benediction, we request all of us to stand up to allow the family to live first, accompanied by the Deputy President. We also allow all our dignitaries as we have mentioned them, to also follow them. Whilst we are standing, Don Laga will be treating us in an item. Babum Fundis. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with Chabani family and the rest of you now and always. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.